they tried lead mining before that. Yeah. But then the you know, bit main and all the ASICs would like because to then they lower this out of the water. The reason why people did the narrow the web mining was because the you know they developed it so it, it banned the ASICs off the network. But that's why Cornhive did all that stuff, and I agree. It's kind of a complicated situation because I agree with the Monero developers. It's like we shouldn't allow ASICs on the network because you need a bit main controlling. Like bit main is really a major player into like the whole yeah. you know fair market. But then bit you know if you don't have ASICs on the network, then you run into the situation where you're you have web mining. But you know that's why I say this. Is, so it's kind yeah. Of so it's a complicated thing. I mean. Yeah, hopefully they'll figure it out eventually. Yeah. And then the uh, next thing is, uh, so I don't know if you guys noticed uh, Binance. So uh, Binance has a Monero base pair now, if I'm correct. And that's a pretty big deal because uh, as a base pair, the Monero is on a base pair on uh, Poloniex. So a base pair is basically Bitcoin against all the other coins, and then Ethereum against all the other coins. So that's a base pair. So a base pair with a Monero on Binance is a pretty good deal. So that means they understand that Monero has a big potential to be a major player in the base pair competition. So we'll see how that plays out in the other exchanges in the future. Uh, this was, uh, I, I posted a follow-up on Reddit today about this and just to see whatever happened in this. For those that don't know, uh, back in uh, December, uh, a Norwegian uh, business businessman's wife got kidnapped and asked for a ransom of uh, ten million dollars in Monero. So they specifically asked for Monero, or maybe they were just trying to pump Monero's bags, or not. Maybe they just asked for Bitcoin, but uh, they asked for Monero, and and supposedly uh, the kidnapper said, "Oh, if you contact the police, you'll never hear back from us again." So so I followed up with this uh, case. Um, so. So there's been um, no sign of life of her coming out saying, oh, she's still alive. So it's, she just disappeared now. So very possible that she might be dead, right? So, so this is the case with uh, Ransom with crypto in the future, which could very well happen uh, down the line and it happened a lot more in uh, third world country. Well, this is not in third world country, actually. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, other countries that are high in kidnapping rates and instead of demanding cash, they'll ask for crypto, right? So another reason to be on the lookout for this. So they never paid anything? Or? Yeah, I don't think they paid anything. Um, I, I don't think so. I think they might have reported that. Because uh, the thing is that I'm pretty sure for them to go public like this, they knew that there's that risk that she might be dead. Who went public? The family? The, the family, I'm pretty sure, this, the, the husband. I mean, for you to go public, that means, you know, you're not getting any response from the kidnappers. I'm sure they were working with the cop before they went public with this thing. So the kidnappers right. weren't blocking. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Very, pretty sure but they weren't blocking. Monero was smart to ask for that because it's yeah. untraceable. Right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously the but kidnappers... Just asking for Bitcoin too. Yeah, they would be stupid. That means they don't understand the system. If the kidnappers ask for Bitcoin, that means they don't understand the transparency of the, of the blockchain. For them to ask Monero, these people are getting more sophisticated as, 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 as time goes on. And these criminals, they, they will get smart and be like, oh, you know what? I'm not going to use Bitcoin because if you cash out, get busted. Right? No matter what, what exit point you use, because eventually it will get back to you. So, so this is things to look out for. <coughs> and uh, aside from that news, back to some <coughs> Monero stuff with the Tari project for those that don't know. Don't know about Atari project, which is uh, being uh, pushed by um, Fluffy Pony, and and um, so this is basically a second layer solution on top of Monero. And it's supposed to be a uh, merge mine with Monero, so it'll be mining with Monero, and we're also securing the Atari blockchain or not. So they're trying to tackle like like tickets or, or like like tickets or fung fungibility with. Tokens or something. Tokens on Monero, kind of. So non fungible tokens. Is the what? Non fungible, non -fungible tokens. tokens. That's what it was. Yeah. Was it NT? NFT. 
in the country. It's called nifties now. Yeah, nifties. Nifties. Yeah. So so that's the problem we're trying to solve. So it'll be an interesting aspect. But you think about it with uh, tokens ERC twenty. There is no um, type of ERC twenty or some type of token where it's private, right? Every there's no private token type of thing. So I can't like issue my own token and make it private. Like on Ethereum, everybody sees where it is. Or you issue on any other blockchain, you can see where it go, comes and goes. But they're tackling an interesting problem to make privacy built into the token. So, so this is a, this is the first and something to look out for also. And uh, other privacy coins. Uh, so, so those that don't know about Grin, Grin is the implementation of the really hyped up Mimbo Wimbo white paper back last year. So, uh, Grin coin came out in January. And they already have an ASIC for it, so they were working with ASIC manufacturers. So this is a big red flag for me. That you know, you must have a lot of VC money, a lot of backers, you know, dumping money into Grin. So you gotta pump it up and mine a whole bunch of Grin with these ASICs. So whoever is making these ASICs for the Grin coin, you know, they're gonna be a big first mover advantage. So a lot, you know, people say scan this that, but. We see how it goes. It's only been out for like two months, uh, green coin, but it has the potential to to um, uh, be a leading player in the privacy coin aspect. And and green coin is actually kind of pushed by the Bitcoin talk too. The, um, the founder of Bitcoin talk, which is the very first Bitcoin form, and he's really gung ho about green and nimble wimble because supposedly. He's a Bitcoin maximalist, and supposedly Bitcoin will use the Mimble Wimble technology. You don't know if it's going to be Grin or not, where it makes Bitcoin super anonymous. So that's the play in the Bitcoin space. Don't know how it's going to play out, but we'll see. Maybe it might be part of Lightning Network with Mimble Wimble. Don't know. All right. Uh, another implementation of Mimble Wimble is called Beamcoin, also released around the same time in January. Uh, these guys, I think they have an ASIC also, but uh, Grin is like Monero, it has no company behind it, but it's just community that's backing it, supposedly, and a whole bunch of VCs that started it up. Uh, but Beam is more corporate, it has a company, it has departments, it has a CEO, so, but it's also not a privacy focused coin. So, uh, very new January, so I'm sure they have a marketing department and they're going to pump it like crazy. In the coming year or two, because obviously that's what the company's for, right? Just to pump it. Slightly bit kind of in, in my analysis, the uh, concept of being is much more like, say, Zcash. Yeah, and yeah. There's yeah. both a corporation, yeah, yeah the corporation, and yeah. also a foundation. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah. there is a debt tax, and that every time you yeah. do an, um, you actually do any mining, a certain percentage of that goes towards the organization. Kind of Yes. Yeah, that's that's the thing with Beams. Like some people don't like it, some people might be for it, because then it pays the developers, the marketers, the pumpers. But then even with Grin, I mean for them to release ASICs, that means those guys were working with the manufacturers way ahead of time. So that means they were in 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 it already. So it's, so there's like it's all perception, right? It's just perception and marketing where you think Grin is like Monero and there's nobody really behind it. But you know, you don't know. Maybe Monero has some some you know corporate entity. Could be Floppy Pony's you know project because he is the face of of of, of the Monero project. I mean. I just like to know one thing about the under their current long term strategy. Their goal is to be ASIC resistant as of oh, December twenty nineteen, uh, which is let's take it out. It's nine months from now. <laughs> nine months. The yeah. current ASIC resistant strategy of yeah, Monero is lasted less than three. Oh. Yeah. So do the math. Yeah, so yeah, there's a lot of fishy stuff going on. Right? A lot of fishy stuff. And another interesting project. Um, so it's Loki. Uh, I think Loki is pretty interesting. I looked into it uh, a couple of months back last year. I forgot when, remember October. You talked about it like yeah. Yeah, I, I picked a whole bunch of like, neural forks. Or, yeah. Forks, and then this this was one of the interesting ones that I noticed. And then I've been following it uh, recently, and it's it has, it's basically a corporation, uh, 
which is a corporate entity, same thing like Zcash or Beam, but for Monero. So it's based off the Monero technology, crypto node. And what I find interesting about it, besides that it's the company behind it, is that it, it takes aspects of, uh, of a Dash, where you can actually have uh, master nodes, but in the, in the Monero ecosystem. And you could, they, they, they're basically trying to do Tor and ITP on these service nodes, supposedly, and trying to do messaging with these service nodes, the master nodes, so I, I found that pretty interesting. I talked to these guys like about three or four months ago, and they seem to be really serious about what they're doing, and yeah. they're having updates every four, Days, yeah, something days, like that. They're bringing out new videos on what they're doing. Yeah. And they're trying to, to replace the Tor network in a way. But when I talk to them, they're saying basically anything you can program on a, on a client side, on a browser side, can be used on their network. I see. But yeah. I mean, it's a messaging app they're working on. That's the first one they want to release. Yeah, the messaging app. Supposedly, I think they're going to try to launch it like when consensus comes. Because they're supposedly like a big sponsor and consensus, so I don't know. So so I think maybe that's when they're trying to launch some, some stuff, but, but I, I thought it was pretty interesting. It might be also a good way to make uh, generate passive income because if you're using their service nodes, you need 42,000 low-key to run a service node. Yeah. That's about, what is it, like $8,000 like, or something? No, it's not $8,000, it's like one Bitcoin. It's like two, three thousand dollars oh, or something okay. like that. Yeah, because of the price drop or whatever. It's 14 cents, I think. Right yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. But the, the tech really, really... Uh, uh, kind of interesting. That, that, that's what I really liked about it. And, and also what really uh, uh, raised my eyes around was that there's actually two Monero devs that's worth on it too. So, so that was a pretty good deal. To me, that was. And they're working out of Australia. Yeah, they're working out of Australia. So we'll see how that comes out. Right? So that's uh, basically my brief four month um, uh, report on, on, on keeping you guys updated for those So another thing, I don't know, thinking like trying to get these meetups into like a live type of meetup. So trying to play with the idea, just trying to figure out how, how we would do the hardware, get this work. I mean, usually we have it recorded, but the things that got to edit it and they upload it, just a lot of time involved, but then you just streamed it, it's just, it's just there. Uh, but, but obviously, you guys have been streamed, but you just streamed this. Because uh, we have some people message us, like, oh, we can't make it recorded. Kind of but yeah. Um, so just hang around, chat, and get to know each other. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.